guys, welcome back to Kicking It Live. This week we take a look at our Kicking It siblings case studio dance, the benefits of coffee, No Shave November, the 16th annual photo contest winners in Diversity Week. Since Ohio is a political swing state, Donald Trump announced that he will be at the Columbus Convention Center Monday at 7 p.m. It's a great opportunity for those interested in his campaign or if you just want to see his hair in person. Now we'll show you how our younger siblings feel about their Kicking It family members. When I watch Kendall on Kicking It Live, it feels kind of weird because she's like not like that in person. So when I see her on screen, it's just different. When I watch Abigail, she stands up a lot straighter and talks a lot better and she looks weird. <laughs> I want to be on Kicking It Live, but I don't want to be like Kendall. <laughs> I want to be on Kicking It Live, but I'll be a lot better than Abigail is now. I'm, uh, I'm really thankful for my sister. She really brings out the best in me, and uh, I don't know what I'd do without her. So Sarah, like, and then she'll like laugh at random things, like whenever she talks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and she always shakes her elbows. <laughs> she shakes her elbows. I haven't noticed that yet, but I've been told. Jack, he's super serious, and he like, blinks a lot, so he's like, when I watch Nathan on Kicking It Live, I like seeing him mess up a lot of the time. I really like watching Johnny because it um, makes me feel bigger because he's a little guy. Uh, I like watching him because he just, he's a funny man. Thanks for your insight, siblings. According to Bloomberg Business, last month was declared the hottest October on record. Because of the heat, the Pacific waters are becoming warmer and scientists think that could trigger an El Nino. An El Nino is a shift in weather patterns caused by the heating of waters in the Pacific. This could lead to intense storms and droughts throughout the U.S. And now to Sarah and Sam with sports. What's up, UA? Welcome to sports. Our football team finished in a, an amazing season on Saturday, losing out to Hilliard Davidson. Congrats, boys. You made the community proud. With our fall sport teams now part of school history and our winter athletes just, starting, just getting started, we took a time out to find a different kind of athlete, one that seems to go under the radar. Welcome to K-Studio. Welcome to our crib. We learned more about K-Studio with senior Isabel Peters. This is K-Studio's sixth year, and I've been on company all six years. Um, we have rehearsals three days a week, and I teach three days on top of that. And Juniors Jacqueline Green and Lydia Milhan talk about the specifics of dance and the commitment they have made. We do ballet, tap, jazz, musical theater, hip hop. I think dance overall is underestimated because a lot of people don't associate it with being a sport. But with the hours and commitment that all of us put into it, I think it should be considered a sport and treated the same. For Sarah Seconder, this has been Sam Buckley reporting for WARL. According to the Oxford Dictionary, an athlete is a person who is proficient in sports and other forms of physical exercise. Considering that these ladies excel in their dance skills, putting countless hours rehearsing and perfecting choreographed routines, which is physically demanding, and many compete, UA dancers, you have our vote as Athletes of the Week. I'm not sure I could do what they do every day. We also want to make mention of a special team in our community. The Columbus Youth Special Hockey Team provides kids and young adults with disabilities the opportunity to play hockey. A few members of the UAHS community are on the team and have entered a competition called UCT Gives Back. The winner of the competition will receive 10,000 buckaroos. This is based purely on voting. Voting is an easy way to support the team. Go to WooBox and click on Columbus Special Hockey. You can vote once a day until December 4th. Check our Twitter account to follow the link to vote. Last week at the OSU Illinois football game, Cardale Jones painted a picture of the Eiffel Tower on both shoes to honor those lost in the Paris attacks Friday. Flags have been flying at half mass across the globe, showing solidarity and support of France. As an added security measure, all fans attending the OSU Michigan State football game tomorrow at the shoe will be restricted on what they are allowed to bring into the game. Only small bags will be allowed inside the stadium, and any bag larger than 14 by 14 inches that isn't clear will be prohibited. This means no backpacks. All previous band items will still apply this Saturday. The Columbus Crew plays at home on Sunday against the New York Red Bulls in the conference finals at 5 p.m. MLS Humanitarian of the Year and MVP candidate Kai Kamara has a message for all of our students. Hi, this is Kai Kamara of Crew SC, and I just want to say, go UA. <coughs> If Kai can cheer on the Bears, the least we could do is support the crew. 
The game will be packed and tickets are limited, but you can still watch it on ESPN. Good luck to Kai and the boys as the crew tries to return to the MLS Cup Final for the first time since 2008. Legendary fighter Ronda Rousey lost in a fight to Holly Holm this week in a huge upset, ending Ronda's unstoppable winning streak. Keep your head up, Ronda. You're still a champ in my book. And now to Lifestyle with Sizzle and Sid. <laughs> Welcome back to Lifestyle. The weather isn't supposed to be great this weekend, cold and rainy at times, so we found a few indoor activities to pass the time. Mockingjay Part 2, the last Hunger Games movie, is now at the box office. So if that's your thing, here's your last chance to watch Katniss take her final stand against the Capitol. One of the most popular games of the year, Star Wars Battlefront, hit stores this <laughs> week. Fans of Star Wars and shooters should go check it out. In other entertainment news, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey announced that they will be hosting the SNL Christmas episode this year on December 19th. No coincidence that the duo also has a film, Sisters, scheduled for release on December 18th. Sydney, I hope you're just as excited about it as I am. For sure, Elizabeth. This week we <coughs> take a closer look at why drinking coffee may actually be good for you. <laughs> Recent studies have proven that coffee can actually be beneficial for your health. This week, Sydney and I visited Stoff's coffee shop to talk to one of the employees about what he thinks the benefits of coffee are. It gives you the perception of being more alert. It helps you go if you got to go. Studies have found that 200 milligrams of caffeine is an optimal amount to enhance cognitive function and mood. Caffeine is a drug just like a lot of other things, um, but you know, if you're not drinking like 20 cups of coffee a day, then I think that that's fine. Like a couple cups, it, it helps you be alert, it helps you um, focus, um, but I think you can't drink too much. I've personally had too much, um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that I would suggest drinking coffee every day. I work at a coffee store, so drink coffee, yeah. After those late night study sessions, be sure to stop by our very own UA Rise before school or during 4th and 5th period. This has been Elizabeth Gearhart and Cindy Thomas from WARL. Wow, who knew my coffee addiction would turn out to be a good thing? Studies conducted by Harvard University also show that people who drink 3 to 5 cups a day had about a 15% lower risk of premature mortality compared to people who don't drink coffee. Previous studies also show decreased risk of stroke and even reduces the risk of getting type 2 diabetes. Every year, Oxford Dictionary's lexicographers, try saying that one, Sizzle, choose a word that captures the year's <laughs> biggest trends or changes in the English language. I'm glad you got that part of the script, Sydney. But this year, they chose a word that has no letters. That's because they have chosen the emoji that cries tears of joy for the word of 2015. The Prindle Institute for Ethics <laughs> at DePaul University announced that their <laughs> annual high school essay contest. This year's topic is humanitarian. <laughs> <laughs> intervention and students can go to the prindlepost.com and click on the high school essay link. Students can win $300 for their essays and now to Trending Fun with Jack and Nathan. <laughs> hey Nathan, you want to play some trivia? Sure Jack, what's the question? What do Leonardo DiCaprio, Johnny Depp, Tom Cruise, and Christian Carlin all have in common? Let me think. Are they all world-class actors? That is correct. If you have not yet seen it, make sure to take a look at Grant Jones' newest short film, Modern Love. For those of you not named Christian Carlin and can't grow a beard in two days, now is your chance. We are about halfway through No Shave November, so the time to act is now. We talked to a few people who have participated this year. How's No Shave November been going so far? You know, it's, uh, it's going pretty solid. It's coming in a little gross here and there, but I like it mainly. I started a little bit before November, so probably 20 or 21 days. You know, it might be a permanent stay. I'm kind of just doing it because Greg Barner has the incapabilities of growing a beard, so why not? Probably a couple days after November and then I'm going to shave it. I just don't know if I could grow the stash out long enough. I started shaving in sixth grade. Just people thinking I'm older. I actually got a haircut yesterday and she thought it was like 23. You know, if uh, there are girls out there that are like, beards are gross, just keep going, baby. It'll get in. It looks good. Do girls prefer guys who participate in No Shave November? For sure. No, I don't know. <laughs> Is your name Nicholas Amore? It is not. Do you have any desire to be Nick and Maura? I do. This has been Jack and Nathan for WARL. Impressive stuff, guys. For those of you who have nothing better to do other than eat football and watch or eat food and watch football, Thanksgiving breaks you use some time to work with those beards. Speaking of food, today is the last day to order tea bread for the Strides for South Sudan fundraiser. It costs seven dollars per loaf and the money raised will go directly to bring food and medicine to the people of South Sudan.
The bread will be baked on Sunday and delivered Monday or Tuesday, so make sure to support this group and fill your stomachs in the process. And now it's time to announce the 16th annual photo contest winners. Congratulations to the following students. All winners of the 16th annual photo contest are Emma Griffith, Kyra Gunn, Sarah Martin, Julianne Honning, Megan Keeler, Elia Metzinger, Daniel Watson, Sheridan Mueller, Annika Peterson, Elsa Heckscher, Caroline Chittister, Rachel Robney, Josh Joseph, and Lily Walsh. Details of the contest results are posted on the high school website, so thanks to everyone who entered this year's contest. And now to What Does the Bear Say with Ed and JR. You may have noticed the music playing in the hallways in between classes. This is because it's Diversity Week. Diversity Club also hosted a diversity fair right outside the auditorium this Wednesday, where a variety of cultural foods were offered for people to try. We asked Anissa Awad, Diversity Club member, about the ongoing events throughout the week. Diversity Week is all about expanding your horizons and learning about different cultures and identities and like learning about different countries as well as different tastes and music. In the spirit of Diversity Week, we had food trucks serving multicultural foods parked up and down Brandon Road. We asked senior student Skylar Mullet for his thoughts on the food. Like, honestly, every time they come, you, you kind of got to go, you know? They're like always super good. This has been Ed Wolf reporting for J.R. Stevens for WAR. Diversity Club meets Thursdays in the first floor LC classroom and it is open to everybody. The advisors are Frau Fellinger and Mrs. Mox. The club's goal is to promote awareness and diversity. On this day in history, in 2012, to Toshiba unveiled a robot that is used to help in nuclear disasters. Also on this day in history, in 1945, the Nuremberg Trials began, which were a series of 13 trials in Germany held for the purpose of bringing Nazi war criminals to justice. A reminder to anyone that is interested in auditioning for the mystery of Edward Drude that auditions are Monday, November 30th. The auditions run from 4.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. and will be held in the UAHS Auditorium. This past Tuesday, Community School hosted a hunger banquet to raise awareness of poverty and hunger. Thinking globally but acting locally, Community School is collecting donations for Mid-Ohio Food Bank. For every dollar donated, Mid-Ohio can purchase $10 worth of food. If students raise $1,000, each of the administrators will take a pie to the face from the four donors. If you want to donate, please stop by the Community School classroom. For freshmen interested in a fun social experience, Freshman Dinner Dance is for you. There are three dances throughout the winter, each filled with food, dancing, and much more. The dates of the dances are January 30th, February 20th, and March 12th. Make sure you sign up. The school store has special hours on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., so if you want to get a jump on holiday shopping, make sure you stop in. Coming up after Thanksgiving break, we'll take a look at the Tardy Rules, Fencing Club, and Olivia Sacuti. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching and go Bears. <laughs> can I kick it? Yes, you can. 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 Can I kick it? Yes, you can.